Oh there, I'm going with a more meaningless video. This is my Optiplex 7010 desktop. And I don't know, I suspect that there's something wrong thermal-wise because now, last time I opened this computer, the CPU cooler was on the dusty side. But I don't understand why this is on the desktop with no application running. Running at 60, 70 degrees Celsius CPU-wise. I, I understand the GPU is 60, 70 degrees Celsius, but why is the CPU that high? I don't know. So we're going to find out. And so I hope to replace the thermal paste. And the computer case is very warm to the touch. Now, it is up against the wall, but the wall... It's cold, the floor is not though, and it has sufficient room to breathe. Nice tooless side panel. Let's check out that CPU cooler. Uh, yeah, it's pretty dusty. The specs for the system is really just stock, you know, it's really stock. Apart from upgraded RAM from 4 to 12 gigs, it came out of the factory with a single channel 4 gig that I put. Another 4 gig module, then I put another, then I put two more 2 gig modules. This is an i5 3517, that's a Quadro 600 graphics card. I think that's the equivalent of a GT 430 or GTS 450. I like, I love Dells because the service manuals are easily available and so is drivers, but I'm going to critique Dell, and that is that motherboard, despite still using, despite switching from BTX to a more standardized micro ATX, um, I first of all don't like how their fan haters are not standard it's a proprietary they've been using proprietary fan haters for like the longest time ever and i also don't like how the fan air is not standard which is just a disappointment so let's go ahead and remove the cpu cooler the cpu cooler seems to it's a beefy aftermarket solution much better than uh, i would say the um intel stock cooler instead of using clips and user screws which is far better uh, clips are very fragile I love Dell's desktop like because it's so slim yet it packs a lot of punch. And there it is. Um, I don't think the uh, the screws are. That's basically no thermal paste. Like there's nothing at the bottom of the cooler, which is actually really heavy, and there's nothing left down there. That might explain why it was very performing poorly. I'm pretty sure that's the factory applied thermal paste, which is completely decided to evaporate. And in contrast to my old desktop when I removed the CPU cooler for the first time ever, it is actually not that dusty down here. That is actually dry, like... Okay, it's got a bit of residue, but not that much, honestly. So, I'm gonna be using... I don't have the best thermal paste, but I do have some decent one. I have some... I have eBay thermal paste, which is actually not that bad for a desktop tower. I have to mention, but I do have... If I can find it. Yeah, here it is. I have these Cooler Master Master Gel, which I use to on my Toshiba Salado so far, which really it's not that great, but you really you don't need alcohol to clean this thermal paste. You, I mean, okay, there is a bit of thermal paste, but okay, I was what I was saying is you don't really need alcohol to clean the thermal paste. Um, a good tissue paper. I mean, it really depends on the type of thermal paste, but most thermal pastes are fine. Okay, this is like a stain cooler because, but there's really nothing on the cooler. Like, it seems to be like stain. Hmm. Interesting. It's quite thick, also. You guys go I five thirty five seventy. Processor. Okay, let's go ahead and play some new thermal paste wherever I put the tube and and uh, put this back together. Thermal paste, th uh, thermals is actually a really important thing because this Quadro 600 graphics card actually stopped functioning and I thought it was dead for good but then I changed out the thermal paste and it came back to life which really just amazed me and just really showed me the importance of good thermals because the Toshiba cell I was on from 5 I'm using is another example. It refused to work but I changed out the thermal paste and it then started working like decently. So this is a very controversial part of the video. How to apply the thermal paste. P size method, blob size method. I really don't care. I just do whatever I want to do honestly. 
and because I this is a desktop I'm gonna apply more than enough that's gonna be enough okay I'm gonna try removing the fan because the fan is super dusty okay before putting back I'm going to clean this because I just cannot stand it but unfortunately my screwdriver is too big there is three parts to this cooler there's the aluminium heatsink there's the fan which seems to be just a 80 mil or 92 mil and then there's a fan shroud which is just above it I'm actually okay with putting the CPU cooler back on the CPU and then removing it to see whether the application was successful uh, because people say you know you shouldn't do it because of air pocket but I think that's complete BS so now I've gotten a much smaller screwdriver wow this is threads are tight See. So I've cleaned out the fan and the uh, CPU uh, heatsink. Man, I'm forgetting the word heatsink. I have to mention that I am. I really like Dell's uh, the fan that Dell's use because I don't know, but something about Dell's fan that I don't know compared to like most compared to Intel uh, stock cooled by AMD and um, Intel. The fans are really powerful and they can really push some air through. So even when the heating so gunked up, it will still try its best to cool. As you guys can see, it's far more clear. I mean, you guys can see the fins through the fan. So I'm actually going to go ahead now, assemble back the computer, and I'm actually going to do it in a bit of convention. I'm going to screw in the heatsink first, and then screw in the fan. by the uh, very very abominable small uh, musket and ketchup cable it's gonna be like this Ah, there's one thing I want to try to fix. My front panel USB 3, well, I no longer use them because, yeah, the pins is completely bent. So you guys can see, yeah, my pins are completely bent. This is actually why my front panel stopped working for my 3.0. But yeah, there's one pin at the top right has bent. So instead of unbending the pin, the pin completely just wanted to do like, get free so as you can see there's a missing pin just right there uh, and this is actually the pin and I don't know how the f it became that bent um, and then I realized that my locking mechanism for the USB 3 connector no longer works so it just pops in there conclusion time I'm very tired but I've dropped about 20 degrees Celsius on the desktop so this computer is a lot more healthy than it was yet. Yeah, it definitely needed thermal paste, um, repasting. Um, unfortunately, I couldn't get the USB 3 header back working because in my attempt to uh, unbend the pin, and I actually broke the pin and it doesn't want to work at all. Now, I do not have luck with the USB 3 on this computer because if I plug USB 3 devices in the back, I actually need to go to the device manager and scan for uh, hardware changes for it to take effect. But I'm actually going to go ahead and plug the USB 3 because um, the cable thing is another reason why I don't trust it. So, yeah, no USB 3 front panel, which is a bummer because I do use all my USB ports at the back. I want to also note that you shouldn't follow my reassembly that I present in this video because you should screw in the CPU fan to the 
CPU heatsink prior to screwing the heatsink on opposed to what I did which was the opposite of that I screwed in the fan after screwing the heatsink to the motherboard which isn't recommended it's a very tedious process I also want to say that I do want to apologize for the length of this video it is quite lengthy I did try to cut it down but I kind of failed at it and I do want to apologize for my frustration showing true to the video I was very frustrated with the internal USB header by the end of the filming of this video and with that I say thank you for watching and for sticking around till the end